Manatee at thought. In the wake of the Paris attacks that occurred last week, I was initially forced to do something that is often too challenging during times of tragedy. Sit, reflect, and stay quiet. This is not to say I have nothing to add to the countless think pieces related to the why, how, and what next in regards to another terrorist attack that occurred in an unanticipated part of the world. Far from it. Yes, the attacks were carried out by a group of people not indicative of the actual ideologies within a religion they propagate. No, I do not think we should close our borders to refugees, since that would be the opposite reaction to the very foundation of the United States and enact the exact reaction terrorism desires. Of course there were other similar attacks that occurred throughout the world that were not covered as virally as the Paris attacks. Emma Kelly, writer of Re Magazine, speaks on this more thoughtfully than I could in her article. The media did cover the attacks on Insert Country Here, you just weren't reading it. There is plenty to say regarding the state of the world after recent events. Thankfully, more competent individuals have done so for me. But despite all the analysis on the what, why, and what next, I feel I can only truly speak on the attacks from a personal viewpoint. I spent over a year living in France and it hurts to see the people I know, love, and care for in pain. Some of my best friends are French and with several of them living in Paris. Speaking with them as things unfolded was a gut-wrenching and ultimately weakening experience because there was nothing I could do to honestly help them heal. In my days of pensive internal examination, I thought of all the students, teachers, and friends I interacted with while teaching English in Vere, France. Mostly, I thought of Mimi, the kind, gentle secretary of the school. Her patience, kindness, and ultimately motherly assistance kept me grounded and made my time in Vere feel truly like a home. While news of the number of murdered individuals kept piling up, I immediately called one of my closest French friends currently living in the United States. Before she picked up the phone, I knew she felt even more powerless than me during the entire ordeal. Imagine having the city you grew up in, the city your family resides in, brimming with violence and anguish a couple of months after you left it. I don't reference my friends lightly. Ultimately, they represent the entity where our focus has to be during these moments of tragedy, the people. We should never forget that we are dealing with human beings. Human beings who've lost members of their families and initially probably don't care about the what, why, and what next as much as we do. They probably don't want to hear anyone's opinions and thoughts. They are just trying to cope with the fact that at this moment, their family members are no longer with them. It is pivotal for us living in this globally connected world to always keep the humanity at the forefront of tragedy and not solely on the what, why, and what next. There is a time for that, but we must always keep people at the forefront of the conversation.